Welcome to Elliot's PT Podcast. I'm here to help you find your balance and live your best life guilt-free. I don't believe there is a one-size-fits-all approach for health and fitness. We're all different and we need to find out what works for us. I'm passionate about helping people make realistic, long-term lifestyle changes that they will stick to and they will take with them forever. I don't believe in crazy diets or short-term fixes. We all need to live and find a perfect balance in diet and exercise that suits our individual needs. I wanna help you find your exercise mojo, feel great and achieve wonderful things. Here is Elliot's PT Podcast by Renee Elliott. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Elliot's PT. So I am wanting to talk a little bit about menopause today. And I just feel like I am in my late 30s. I turn 40 next year. And um, I have probably been hit with a lot of stresses in the last couple of years, which I think most of us have. And I've definitely learned lots of ways to manage it, to manage my stress and all of this. But part of getting blood tests and that done is that I was actually quite early in to menopause than what I thought I was. And that's fine. But I really, and it has put me onto a road of, I guess, learning as much as I can about it. And I really feel that this is something that most people should do. It is, um, you know, most people are told that we are going to get to a certain age and we will hit menopause and you might have heard things from your your mum or your grandma or you might hear other uh, people around you talk about it and they might all talk about it as such a horrible thing. And I really want to question that how the how you go into menopause, maybe the way that how, how it pans out for you. And I don't know because I'm not there yet, but I am definitely, I train a lot of women that are going through menopause or that have been through it or at the end of it. And I definitely have noticed differences between different people and different things that they've been doing. So my viewpoint is that I want to know as much as I can about it. I want to know as much as I can about it and I can set myself up to um, for, for menopause to be, again, not that horrible thing that you might hear people talking about. Um, the truth is that most, it is generally, it is a very under-researched area. And the the ladies that are in their 60s or so now, they're probably the first women to actually go through menopause and weight train. Um, and they're, you know, because uh, years and years ago, people didn't last, didn't live that long, you know, and again, people just thought that your life was over when that happened, which is so not true. Um, You know, obviously we have stages and there is, you know, different stages of your life and menopause is a different, is a different stage. Um, It's not bad or good. It is a different stage. And I think it can be, uh, you can see it as nice and positive and it can be, it doesn't have to be that, you know, and I see also people think like, Oh, they say, um, the menopausal weight gain, you know, and I don't believe and lots of current research that I've been reading uh, shows that it's not actually the menopause that's causing you to weight gain, it's to gain weight. It is um, more the changes in your lifestyle. So uh, the changes in your lifestyle. So they are, again, things that you can control. So we don't have to accept that, you know, that we may have gained weight and we don't have to accept that that is what is going to happen to us or has to happen to us um you know it can you can definitely um with understanding your body and have more knowledge out there about yourself you can definitely change things um i know that i've had ladies doing the classes that you know have had horrible nights of uh, night sweats and being up being up through the night and not being able to sleep and we have looked at their food through programs, through my programs such as Macro Balance and the Little Bat Dress Project, we've been able to look at their food and what they're eating and how that can affect your sleep. So if you are somebody that is awake at different parts of the night, uh, that can all be to do with your digestion. And there are certain times of the night where different our body is processing different things 
and um, it can it will definitely affect your sleep so if you are somebody that is awake the same time every night I would really um, encourage you to look at what you're eating so if you are having maybe red meat before you go to bed that takes a lot longer to digest so maybe swap it for fish and see how you feel if you change to fish I had a lady that did so and she changed to eating just fish at night and her night sweats pretty much went away so again you know it is not one rule for everybody but you have to work out what works for your body but that is def definitely something that I would try I would look at eating if you like red meat I'd look at eating it earlier in the day and um, yeah focusing on eating fish um, before you go before you go to sleep they say um, you know and, and I really think the more that you can be informed on how things work for your body how menopause works for you the more you can understand your food I really really feel that food um, makes a massive difference to you know people that are um, when we feel stressed we are going to lean towards different food and you know that foods maybe not gonna it might make us feel good immediately but it's not going to help us in the long run uh, when we are feeling emotional uh, lots of people definitely lean towards food when we're feeling that way um, maybe when you feel like you are feeling frustrated angry <laughs> flat uh, you feel like you're going to you know tear someone apart you know thinking about your food is not <laughs> is not it is not what you're going to want to do in that situation but if you start understanding your body earlier if you start understanding what food works for you how to eat properly and all of those things you can get on top of this before you hit menopause so to speak and and this is what I really uh, encourage everybody to do is to start understanding understanding what food works for them understand their body better so then so then when they're in these situations they can they can give they can do the best thing for them and you know and I really feel by if you are somebody that might be the same age as me you know if you have the understanding if you have the understanding of your food you understand um, yeah what works what food works for your body what first gives you the high energy I see so so many mums you know I see so many mums and they say they feel so flat and tired and then when we start looking at their food you know they're severely under eating or they're you know they're, they're never eating enough protein that's that's the probably the biggest thing you know and when I tell people how much depending on you know where they're at and their body their um when I tell them how much protein they should be eating per day people are like shocked you know and again by the you know so when if you can understand all of these things and understand your food better then you know it doesn't when you hit menopause it doesn't have to be you don't have to have these big highs and lows you know like I knew another lady that she you know she was a shift worker and she was going through menopause and she just felt nothing worked for her she was you know just ready to kill anybody and she was sick of feeling that way you know but she was severely under eating she did shift work she um you know she was severely under eating and then she was um, drinking a lot you know because uh you know i guess she enjoyed drinking which there's nothing wrong with that but you know alcohol also causes inflammation so you know and lots of you know when you have when you have that better understanding of your food and all of that stuff you can really make big changes you know um exercise wise for women that for women that are you know are older and are maybe you know going towards um going towards menopause at doing a really really hard hit class at night time is, is probably not the best thing for you that might be something that you might be better to do that class in the morning because that those are you know again more research has shown that that that's is going may those types of classes are late at night are going to affect your sleep so you might be better to do more quieter classes like yoga or pilates do them at night time and um, you know make sure that you're doing your strength classes 
or your HIIT style classes that you're doing them earlier in the morning because your body is going to recover better from that. And this is all experimenting. And what I'm saying is take charge. So don't accept that menopause is something that we have to go through and it is something we have to go through. It is part of our, our life, but don't accept that it's going to be horrible because um because I don't believe it has to be that way. Uh, you know, we also, I know lots of people that went, have gone through menopause fine. I know lots of people that have gone through it, you know, and have found it really, really rough. But I think the more that you can understand your body, the more that you can understand yourself, what works for you, that you can make that journey a lot different. That, that's horrible for us, you know, and because, again, some people, it, it lasts for years. So, you know, if you start understanding your food now and really nourishing your body properly, uh, you know, like I said before, mums, I get it, we're busy. And putting yourself first uh, it seems to be the last thing that we all do. But, you know, you really need to be good <laughs> and feeling good about yourself so then you can be good for everyone else. And, you know, um, that, you know, sugar, we we are eating, we are eating more processed food than any, than, you know, we ever have. Uh, they add so much preservatives and stuff into food that, that people, so they can keep it for longer on the shelves and all of those things, and all of this affects us. And again, there's not enough, it's not been going on for long enough, uh, you know, that, that people don't understand it or they haven't researched it enough. But, you know, again, um, this stuff can make all your symptoms worse. And if you, if you can understand, if you can understand the food that you should be eating to nourish your body, then maybe those, those symptoms aren't going to be, you know, as bad as bad as what they are. If you can uh, actually start to understand your cycle, you know, and how how you, your cycle is, and regardless, um, I say this to everybody, regardless of where you are at, whether um, your perimenopause, you know, pre menopause, going through menopause, or whether you've had a hysterectomy, whether you're on the pill, whatever, you all get some form of a cycle. And you have some form of a cycle and that affects you. And like for me, I didn't get, I didn't even, I didn't think that my cycle affected me. I don't get period pain or any of those things. I didn't think it affected me. And when I actually started following my cycle a couple of years ago, when I actually started following it, I realized I actually have, <laughs> I have quite um, severe symptoms. But I just, my personality is I just always think to push through. But when I could understand that there was times of the month that I was um, more t I was more tired and I needed to just sit and relax and, and rest instead of trying to push through and do things, when I can then adapt my exercise to suit that way, I, it doesn't feel so bad and it's not my fault. It doesn't mean I'm, it doesn't mean I'm, you know, less fit or it doesn't mean I'm less strong. It just means at the moment my hormones are challenging me. So maybe a quieter exercise is better or maybe I need to have a rest, you know, and not and maybe only do a few sessions that week instead of one every day or something like that. But when you understand your body and you understand how it's actually working, you can adjust things to suit, which is going to give you more consistency. So lots of people say they've hit menopause and they've gained weight, but they've probably their activity level has changed. You know, you might maybe not, you might feel crappy. So then you may not have, you've given up exercise because you think, well, I'm so tired all the time. I might, I may as well not exercise. So maybe you've done that. Maybe you don't walk as much or you don't have as much daily movement. So it's not actually the menopause that has made you gain weight. It is your, that your activity um, level has changed. But if you can start understanding your body better before you get into those stages, I really feel that you can hit it running. And yes, I, I'm, I'm not there yet, and, um, but it is definitely something that I feel that I'm, I feel like I'm preparing myself to uh, give it the best shot that I will get through um, another phase of my life and get through and it doesn't have to be the horrible menopause um that everybody talks about and it you know again it can last for years and you know um stress stress is like the silent killer and there is so much stress and that around that i really feel that women really underestimate how stressed they are we have so many things going on 
in our minds and uh, we have to obviously juggle lots of things and sometimes when you do hit the age where you might be in menopause you um maybe you've been in such a stress state for such a long time you actually don't know any different <laughs> and we're living in that fight or flight mode and and, you know, you, we, we're constantly thinking that we have to run away from the tiger. So your body's always trying to, you know, producing that more considerable and it's trying to protect yourself and and learning, you know, starting to learn some techniques, you know, at a younger age or before you hit that menopause to help you manage stress is always going to be a benefit. It's a benefit at any age. I last year was, um, didn't realise, but I was highly stressed and I think life had just kind of crept up on me uh, and I was more stressed than what I realized so I've had to really really uh, this year put a really big focus on trying to reduce my stress and I have found that through meditating but I also find it through journaling too um, if I'm feeling stressed about something you know the more times we've got something going around in our head we're giving it more power and, you know, it's going round and round and round the head and sometimes just the getting it out of your head, it, it, it's just massive. <laughs> getting it out of your head and putting it on a piece of paper, it doesn't become as powerful as what it was when it was just ruminating in your head. And that's what I found by, um, yeah, I've really found in helping reduce my stress. I've helped reduce my stress um, and meditating and journaling has been a big part of that journey. So I just, I just wanted to do a quick, um, I'm going to be doing lots more stuff on menopause. It is something I'm really passionate about. It is something I'm learning lots about because it is a, um, a stage of life that I will be coming up to. I, I could be 10 years away. I could be longer or I could be earlier, but it is something that I am going to be have more knowledge about. I am going to be empowered uh, going into it. And it is something that when I understand by understanding my body, what works for me and understanding um, my stresses and how to manage the stress that I really feel that it won't be something that will take over my life. And I really feel for, um, you know, for you guys, the more that you can understand your body too, that it can be exactly the same way. So, you know, don't just, don't just accept that menopause is something that will happen um, and that it's going to be horrible or anything. I think number one, look into how you talk about it. Um, I've listened to so many, um, you know, podcasts and different things about women that have gone through menopause and the attitude that they've had and how it has been so different. And I am really um, focusing on spreading this message so that it can be, um, it doesn't have to be, the, the dreaded thing that people talk about, it can be, you know, it can be a really good, a next, a great next phase of your life, you know, because maybe by the time that you were hitting this, your kids might be older, you might be able to spend more time with your partner, just used to again, and you know, you really want to enjoy the time, you don't want to be spending it feeling crappy, and I think that with having good knowledge of your food, good knowledge, and you know, keeping a great exercise routine up, but making sure you're exercising the way that works for your body. If you're understanding your cycle and how that can work for you. And you know, there are times in the month where you might need a rest if you're getting sleep, sleep is key. And you know, that's the thing is if, um, if your food, if you're eating certain foods or you're not eating enough foods and that's keeping you awake, then you're not going to get that adequate sleep. And sleep is massive. And when we're getting the adequate sleep, everything falls into place. And, you know, we are less irritable, less stressed. Uh, we make better choices with food. And, you know, sleep sleep is number one. And, you know, it doesn't um, – when, you know, like I said, the lady that she changed her food through the evening and she, you know, she, she was those night sweats definitely stops. And I know when I have a rough night – uh, and I don't get enough sleep, I am cranky. So sleep is a definitely a big priority of mine. And, you know, again, it's something that people don't prioritise. They don't prioritise it because they don't see it as important, but sleep, sleep is the number one thing. So if you are somebody that is heading into menopause, if you are somebody that is in it, if you are somebody that is finished it, you know, um, you know, let's 
take charge today and start to learn more about it and become more aware of your body and you can really, really work out what works best for you so you can have the best, keep living that best life and feeling really, really good about yourself. So um, please make sure if you think this could help anybody that you please share it onto them because um, it is really a message I want to get out to everybody. And I will speak to you all again soon. Okay, bye. The Summer Shape Up program begins on the 15th of August. This program is an eight-week guided weightlifting program where you are going to be guided by me and you are going to be shown how to lift weights properly, how to really increase your strength and increase your one rep max. There is different tasks each week for you to do. You are going to be shown the best way that you can strength train and how you can benefit your benefit your whole body and create that nice leaned tone look that we are all looking for so you can feel confident in the summertime in your bathers out on the beach so if you want to be the first to know when the summer shape up program begins make sure that you join the waiting list now you can join by clicking the link below